All right, we should be live. It should start automatically. Um, I'm going to share this entire screen here. All right, so this time we'll look at an issue in the next our repository here. You can file your own issues if you want to ask a question beforehand, and we can get to it eventually. Um, so open issues. Uh, if you have an issue that you also want to get answered, you can leave a thumbs up so we can more easily find the ones more people are interested in. Um, so actually, this one is one I've that was asked uh, a while ago. I filed the issue myself, um, but I think this is a very interesting topic. And so I, I think let's go for that. Um, we did uh, look at this in the previous next hour, but um, it's a bit different than the pur purity meant here. Uh, yeah. So uh, I, I kind of want to start off with this with um, in next there are kind of three layers. Uh, the first of, wh of which is the the next language and the language and the next evaluation or the evaluation of this next language. After you have uh, evaluated something, you get usually a derivation back. So you have the kind of derivation and uh, building those derivations layer. And finally, you produce some build result and you can run those uh, running. And Nix, uh, in the Nix ecosystem, there are levels of purity for, for each of these. So you can have pure evaluation, you can have pure building, and you have can have pure running. Uh, but these are fairly independent of each of each other, or like entirely independent even. Um, and so on the next language level, uh, traditionally you didn't have, uh, you only had the kind of purity provided by the language itself. So that like if you write a function fun uh, equals x to x, this function couldn't do any, couldn't have any side effects. It could only depend on on x itself, and so on. Um, but traditionally, you could also have these impure next paths. So the angle brackets. You could have um, built-ins. Well, let's list these out. Uh, the impurities. Uh, things like like this, so you have built-in stock current system, and so on. These are the ones you know from from Flakes. Uh, current uh, time, I think, is also one that exists. Um, and so, uh, some time ago, uh, pure evaluation was introduced, which allows you to pass the get n via. There's a bunch more as well. Uh, you can pass the pure eval command line option, which enables pure evaluation, which disables all of these built-ins and functionalities, making Nix very, very much pure. Um, and for Flex, this uh, pure eval is enabled by default. And uh, pass impure to disable that. Um, yeah, and so this is this is nice. So we we have an improvement. We can use pure, pure evaluation now. Sometimes you might want impurities, but this is the kind of purity at the next language level. Uh, then on the derivation level, um, well, actually, let's look at this a bit uh, a bit closer first. Um, let's uh, write this under. XR purity.md. Sure. Um, so let's try to really quickly demonstrate this purity. Um, so let's just write a very simple next file. Let's try uh, some set build in stock current time, or this is time. We have uh, some. The user, we can do built-in stock get and 
user to get the current user. Uh, we also have some uh, the the kind of home directory. We can get this with the squiggly or the the tilde. And let's do like next hour here. Uh, we can also do uh, system. Yeah, and so this is a. Uh, well, let me check the comments here for a second. Oh yeah, uh, like registries are being discussed. Uh, so, I mean, what even is purity? So we have a a single expression here. Uh, this is a constant expression. Nothing changes about this. Uh, if we evaluate this, we can do a next instantiate eval. This gives us some result. Uh, so yeah, we can we can see with home directory the system time. Uh, but now we evaluate this multiple times and we can get different results. So time here, for example, uh, ends with 9.8 and we do it another time, it changes. Uh, the user, if I evaluate this with a different user, like if I do sudo, I oh, um, need to enter my password. If I evaluate it with sudo, we have a user equals root here. Similarly, if I evaluate this on Darwin, we get a different result. Uh, if I evaluate this in a different, oh yeah, here we can see the home directory changed. So this path also changed. So purity, so impurity means that for the same expression, for the same input, you can get a different result. And uh, there is some kind of, ambiguity for what it means to be an input and what it means to be an output. So with flags, for example, we might do a flag.mix. Uh, and let's say, I mean, flex explicitly has inputs here. So we can say inputs.nextpackages.url equals uh, github xyz next packages, and then outputs x next packages. And then let's do packages.x linux dot hello equals uh well <laughs> you can get, get you kind of get the idea. Um hello. So in this case, what is really the input? Because we have we have single next expression here. Uh, but if we evaluate this, let's try nix eval. Uh, hello. We can see it does some extra things. Uh huh. Well, in this case, it will always evaluate to the same thing. So it will evaluate to hello. Uh, but let's say, I mean, we use uh, the package here. Let, let me write this out. Import next packages, inherit or system equals this um, dot hello. Bit ugly, but uh, it will do. And uh, syntax failure here. Oh, and uh, I seem to have messed something up. What is the problem here? Path. You're evaluating something in the somewhere else in pass through, so it's JSON it. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jason. Yep. Uh, so this is this kind of hello, but now uh, what if we do? So this is a single flag.nex. We can update the, the so, so write flags creates a flag lock file. And now what if we do flag lock, um, flag? Lock update input. I think there is a screen sharing disappeared. Oh no, Jitsi is having some problems. Uh, I, I appreciate pointing you pointing out this, and it disappeared again. Um, this might be a problem. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let me know when it happens again. 
So we get this one hello in a previous version, but now we can also update uh, the input. And well, in this case, we probably get the same thing because we have um, master probably didn't change in those couple seconds, uh, but we could get a different result here. Uh, yes, for kind of the same flake.next expression, uh, but the flake.next uh, in flakes, we consider the uh, lock file to be also an input to the to the evaluation. Well, the, the entire uh, flake repository is really an input. So in other words, the if you commit all the files, let's do git init, let's do git add all, and then some commit, then we next eval, uh, then all of these files are the input to the evaluation. And Flakes also kind of keep, has this in mind because it says up here, um, oh, actually the warning is gone. Oh, probably because it wasn't a Git repository. Uh, but let's say we update flag here, add something insignificant, and it's going to complain that the, the tree is dirty, uh, which kind of means that, yeah, you uh, the input isn't that well-defined because you have files that you haven't committed yet. Um, so yeah, uh, purity is kind of a, a matter of what you consider inputs and what uh, what you don't consider inputs. Uh, but this is purity at the next level. So right, we have this file. And uh, now what if we try to uh, evaluate this file with pure evaluation mode? Um, let's do let's instantiate this time. And let's do well, the default on next, which is also the default. Uh, strict. And then pure eval. And we, we now get the first problem already. Uh, with pure eval, with the kind of traditional CLI, uh, you can't even access arbitrary paths in here. So you need to do something more fancy, like uh, passing an expression, and then in the expression doing a fetch git, uh, then doing a um, URL equals uh, this. I'm not even sure if that works. Let's try it out then revision, and then revision, uh, what is that? Let's pick the latest revision here. So this is a bit of a pain. Uh, so we get the source like that. And then let's import this. And now, <laughs> yeah, we get, we get an error, that's that's expected. Um, so it says we are we have pure evaluation mode enabled. We can't resolve that path because it's impure. It changes depending on where you, on the context. And we can see if we comment this out, we get an error for, uh, still for that. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> we still have the same input. So in, in pure eval mode on the traditional CLI, the command line is considered the input. So we have the same command line. We get the same result as before. If we want something changed, we need to update the hash here, which means to add the files. You lost your screen, share, by the way. Oh, thank you. Maybe you can like uh, raise your hand or something when when that happens. Uh, okay, so even though we have the same, well, we have the same input here, the same CLI command, it's going to return the same result. And to influence that, we need to make a new commit. So we add all the files. Uh, we make a commit. And uh, we can get a new commit hash with that. Now we can go back to the CLI here, change the uh, change that. And now we get a different result. This time it complains about current system missing, which is an artifact of pure evaluation mode. Um, next, uh, in pure evaluation mode, you could say there's two ways to do it for built-ins. You can either remove the built-in. That's what next does. Uh, I, I would like it if there was a better error here because this 
doesn't really show you that it's running in pure evaluation mode. Uh, but yeah, in any case, this is kind of next uh, expression purity. Now, the, the next kind of purity I want to talk about is the uh, derivation purity and the, the building purity. Uh, here we have, so this, after evaluation happens, you have derivations and these derivations have a build recipe and this, these derivations need to be built somehow. And you do not want arbitrary things to influence your build. Uh, you don't want the builds to have access to the home directory. You don't want your builds to have access to the internet. Uh, these are you know, two main things. Um, so we have impurities or things like uh, builds accessing uh, home directory or builds fetching uh, from the internet. Uh, there's other things like um, uh, processor architecture. Um, there's things like how fast or how um, much, how many processors you have. Things like that. Time in general. What in general? Time. Oh yeah, time. <clears throat> like yes. uh, recording the uh, current time in uh, a build product. Oh, yes, current yes. time, time of the build or anything exactly. related to time. Yeah, yeah. And so this, uh, if so, if any of these kind of change the build, you will have a different build result uh, when you build it multiple times. Um, and so the the way to uh, to make it pure. Uh, that's what the next sandbox does. So uh, in the next sandbox, a lot of restrictions are done. Uh, well, as pure as reasonably possible. Uh, the next sandbox prevents access to the internet. It prevents access to, to the home directory, to arbitrary directories. Uh, however, it doesn't prevent access to the processor architecture, to how many you have, to the current time. Uh, current time specifically could be done, uh, but it's not done. Um, there's ways to kind of fake the current time to processes. Uh, yeah. Uh, the next sandbox, if enabled, so I believe on Linux, it is enabled by default. I'm not sure if it's on, enabled by default on Darwin. It might not yes, it be. Is. Oh, it is now? Nice. Yes. Yeah. It just, I think it will not even work with us and or something because there was something about that. Okay, nice. Um, so yeah, so next sandbox if enabled. And uh, let's take a look at that. Uh, so I'm going to go to, um, let's do uh, derivation purity.next. So let's write a simple expression here. Let's import packages as always in a very impure way. Uh, and then let's write a simple derivation. I'm going to use a run command here, uh, test, and uh, just doing this. So yeah, let's do, what can we do here? We can get date. Uh, so I'm not sure if I can run this right in here, but that's this would be a simple example. So let's just run date that returns the current date in some format. And let's try next build, derivation purity, and cat result. There's a type online too. Uh, the, the PKGS. Oh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Uh, sorry, I th I guess I was wrong. It's actually not enabled by default on Mac OS. Ah, I see. It just yeah. works on Mac OS. That's not enabled. Yeah. So I guess important if you're on Mac OS, uh, you might want to look into enabling the sandbox. I think there are some reasons some reasons why it's not enabled by default. So you might have to look at that a bit closer. Um, but yeah. So 
we built the, uh, the derivation here, we get as an output the kind of current time. Um, and now if we try to, well, let's get out of this. Uh, if we try to build this again, well, next by default uh, caches everything. So it won't build something twice um, unless you pass the dash dash check, at least in the traditional CLI. In that case, oh yeah. <laughs> so check actually uh, is called check because it builds it twice and then checks whether the outputs are the same. And in this case, it's it actually fails because we have a different result because we got the current time. Um, this is, well, uh, what we could do instead is just do next door. So let's delete this path, delete this. Uh, why is it still in use? Oh, this might be a problem. Well, Let's cheat a bit. So um, in this case, the so we have the derivation path here. Uh, if we do a next instantiate or let's do next REPL for, uh, now let's do next instantiate eval for the derivation purity and let's evaluate the out path. So the out path here, only depends on the derivation build recipe. So when we evaluate this multiple times, it's, it's going to get the same result. And this is why the check here complains, because we want to populate the same store path, but with different results, which is a bit, is a bit weird. Um, if we want to change this path, we need to change the actual build recipe here. So when we add like a new line here, or, or let's say we add some uh, the variable equals test, then it's going to change. So we do an exit eval and we get a different path. Now we can also do just check the result here again and we get a different a different date. Um, something, something kind of, um, we can mess around a bit with this. What if we want to always rebuild the derivation without having to check it and, and kind of make some, some very impure things. Uh, a way to do it is to embed the current time from eval, eval time into the, into the um, build environment. So we can do this, time equals build and start current time. And uh, then let's also do like echo time to out or like eval time was and let's also do the uh, echo build time was date and actually let's use plus percent s this also returns the unix epoch which is what uh, the current time here uh, uses and let's dollar before Oh, yes. So if we do this, we get eval time was this, build time was this. These are very close together. That makes sense. And this changes now every time. Yes. But this is, I mean, this is kind of two levels of impurity. Uh, and impurities are not good. <laughs> you generally want to avoid purities. Uh, but this kind of demonstrates it fairly well. Um, yeah, and so during the build here, uh, we can also do things like, uh, well, let's try fetching something from the network. This is what the sandbox should prevent. Uh, so let's go like, I mean, let's fetch the um, this repository. Or uh, let's go to this repository and fetch like the readme in the, from in the raw form. Well, let's go here, let's do a curl. I think I need to use packages.curl. And if we want to be super uh, sure that we get the binary output, we use lib.getbin. Uh, curl this URL, let's 
make this a bit prettier. And let's output this to, um, well, let's make, make dear out. And let's write this to eval time. Let's write this to build time. Actually, I, I, I think it's, let, let's keep it simple. Let's just do this. and append instead of override, okay? So if we try this, uh, we get lib is undefined, fair enough, practice.lib. And we get a failure. Uh, so curl complains here that cannot could not resolve host uh, the GitHub user content here. So this is the sandbox doing the proper thing. You can check whether the sandbox is enabled by looking at your next next.conf. And here we have sandbox equals true. Uh, sandbox fallback, I'm actually not sure what that is. You can maybe check that later. Um, yeah, and so if I want to disable the sandbox just to see whether that works, I believe I can, uh, let's see, option sandbox false, let's see. That still doesn't work. I guess I'm not. Um, so this is a daemon level setting. I don't think I'm overriding the daemon level options here. Let's try it with sudo. That might work. Uh, OK, that gave us a different er error. This time, we don't have any CA certificates. Um, I think for this, we can just use impure for now or in insecure. This way, I think curl shouldn't check SSL certificates. OK, that works. Uh, so yeah, we get the, the result here. We get the fetched file. Um, but yeah, this is this is not great. Uh, and here we could also do, let's do um, cat uh, my, my home here. Uh, let's output. Let, let's let's make something funny. Let's output this file itself and append this to the end here. No, it's a different file. Oh, uh, yeah. Thanks. Derivation purity. Let's try this. Oh, permission denied. It looks like there's some additional protection in there. I think that might be. I think it's just that uh, the build user doesn't have access to your home directory. Oh, I see. I see. Yep. So um, what could we do? Well, it's let's let's. Conf. Uh, what is the next conf? It's, it's just a file that they'll be able to look at or something in temp. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's try something like that. So let's do, um, yeah, like next, uh, next var next dot conf. No, it, no, that's not right. etc next next dot conf. All right. Sandbox false, uh, we need to use sudo. And in the results here, we get the entire next.conf file. So yeah, that's that's not great. The sandbox is generally a good thing. Um, OK, but now um, some sometimes you have some kind of build that wants to fetch something from the internet, but you don't want to disable sandbox for the entire uh, set of derivations you build. For this, there is a not super well-known uh, thing you can do, and that is underscore underscore no ch root root equals true. I believe I spelled that right. Uh, no ch root means that, uh, so there's, well, let's just try it out here. So there's three fields you can pass here. You can either say true, false, or relaxed. In the relaxed sandbox mode, it's going to build with the sandbox by default, but if you provide a no chroot attribute, uh, 
set to true, it's gonna allow uh, it's gonna allow running it without the sandbox. So if we try this, that works. Uh, but if, for example, we build another derivation, or let's remove this no ch root, try it again, then it's going to fail. So this is kind of a, uh, if you happen to have some build that's not entirely pure and you can't get your tooling to, to be pure, uh, then this is a, a workaround. So of course, it's going to be impure in the end. Um, yeah, so uh, there are some, oh, another uh, common source of randomness uh, or non-determinism is randomness. So we can just do like, um, how, do you, how do you query etc friend or a... Uh, so def slash u random. Oh, it's in def random. Yeah, like like this um let's just put this in here uh yeah so you can you can also get def slash uh you random or random and this also works uh, even without the, sand the sandbox uh, or even with the sandbox enabled um let's comment this out and this yeah, so we can get some random outputs through that as well, and that changes every time you you build it. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure why it failed. Probably some some failure here. Um, yeah, so so this is build time purity. Uh, the sandbox prevents this, uh, but now, well. So we have the first level of impurity or purities. That's entirely for the next language level. And this is prevented. This can be fully prevented by Nix. So Nix can make this entirely pure. Uh, the second level of purity is Nix tries to prevent these impurities. It can't do all of them. Uh, well, it could theoretically prevent all kinds of impurities like this. Uh, it would have to run like an entire virtual machine or something inside the build to make all the inputs deterministic and, and probably disable um, uh, the, the multi-threading. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it would be very bad for, for build performance. And this is why it's mainly not done. Uh, in Nexus case, we can get most of the benefits just from preventing these two things. And By the way, I think Hydra disables, uh, enables only one core, basically, so that uh, you it get enables less, what? Uh, only one CPU core, so that, well, not, it basically tells builds not to use many cores, so just use one, specifically right. to avoid these uh, impurities. It's on yeah. Hydra that builds everything for Linux packages. Yep. And so, right, by default, I think even by default, the build systems in Linux packages, they do not use parallel parallelism. And so uh, in Linux packages, you will sometimes see enable parallel building equals true. This is to explicitly opt into parallel parallel builds. And you can do this when you know that the um, build result is deterministic, even in even when you have parallel building enabled. Um, otherwise, Hydra will uh, uh, probably mess up and give non-deterministic results. Uh, so yeah, enable this if you want parallel builds to happen with like Make and, and CMake and and these systems. Um, Oh, something else, uh, the kind of build time purity that's closely related to reproducibility of binaries and packages. Uh, so this, I think uh, there, there's some distro that really focuses on this. And next we have uh, this web page, which kind of goes in that direction a bit. 
uh, record r13y.com. It kind of tracks uh, how many paths in the uh, ISO minimal NexOS uh, build are reproducible. And that's almost all. Uh, it also has some nice output here using Diffoscope. Very recommended if you need to compare uh, binary outputs. It, it shows what the, the differences are between those binaries. And yeah, generally, these are very small and very hard to debug uh, if it comes down to like the last couple ones. And so here we can see it's it's like a single byte that's that's sometimes different in these binaries. Uh, yeah. And so, right, this also relates to the check we saw earlier. So we, we tried the, the next build once and then check. And here we get, uh, oh, not valid. All oh, right. The derivation changes every time because we have the time here uh, as a as an environment variable. Uh, but so the check is kind of a way to check determinism of uh, of packages, of derivations, uh, though it's not perfect because check, of course, you're on your current machine, which has the same processor ar architecture, the same processor, uh, the same number of cores, and so on. So it's not a very wide check of reproducibility. Oh, and uh, yeah, thanks for linking that website. Uh, the reproducible builds, reproducible-builds.org. I think that's just a more a, a better project or a more involved project for making yeah. things reproducible. Uh, yeah, it's not associated with Next directly, but I think it came out of Debian probably. But it's basically about in general fixing open source projects so that their builds are reproducible and Nix, of course, uh, benefits from this as well. Nice, yeah, that's, I, I do like this effort. And um, I think that's also kind of how the, is Nexus reproducible? Uh, this kind of effort to make Nexus reproducible kind of came out of uh, other efforts to make other distros reproducible. Nix is kind of in a good place for this because we have the, we have had the sandbox for like, the, I'm not sure how many years, surely over a decade. Um, Although it recently came up for somewhere that like Nix, uh, the difference between efforts that Nix does and what reproducibility builds uh, community does uh, is that Nix tries to very hard to make the provide the same tools every time and similar, very similar environment and limit access to everything. But if, for example, compiler tends to insert random strings in, in the result or align differently depending on architecture or something, then Nix cannot do much here. And that's why reproducibility uh, community, reproducible builds community, uh, that's what they do. They patch compilers yeah. like uh, and, and stuff to make their output the same for everybody, including Nix. Yeah, yeah, and so I I wouldn't be surprised if these uh, these differences here in the uh, for Nix were caused by some compiler just producing different differences, and that would also be in in line with the reproducible builds project to to fix and address. Yeah, like what you, I saw on the screen before, you know, some uh, offset in the binary is different. It's oh, definitely yeah. because of different architecture of a bit oh, different yeah, yeah. And your screen it just disappeared again. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I the... also heard that uh, JHC unfortunately can be can have um, irreproducible or non-deterministic builds. When you use template Haskell and you have multiple cores, there's also some issue that can also happen. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's prevalent, but there's efforts to improve it, which is nice. Um, I, so I do want to certainly move on a bit. better these days because, like, if you go back a few years, then like the 
uh, default archiver for, uh, that comes with GCC used to embed timestamps in its output by default, or it used to um, sequence things randomly um, so that you couldn't, like reproducibility was, was just a pipe dream just a few years ago. So a lot of things have mm. uh, happened in the right direction here. Nice, nice. Yeah, so so that's pretty that's pretty cool, and it would help Nix uh, as well. Oh, and especially this also relates to the uh, content addressed derivations in Nix. Um, I think uh, where would be the best place? I'm not sure if this is up to date. Um, content addressed. So content addressed Nix has been a thing, an experimental feature for some time. And uh, that kind of makes it so that instead of the uh, instead of these let's instantiate instead of these output paths being based on the derivation inputs, they are based on the output instead. So if you have the same output, you get the same store path here. And this is, of course, uh, goes hand in hand with reproducibility. Uh, because when you're reproducible, you will get the same store path here, which also means uh, caching improvements and so on. Yeah? Your screen is coming in. Oh, uh, th <laughs> thanks. Um, yeah, so uh, the last kind of purity I want to talk about is the uh, build result purity or uh, runtime purity. Uh, so after you have built some derivation, you can run the result and you expect that to be pure in some ways. So let's let's go into like next packages here and let's do a uh, build of hello. Actually, not sure if hello links to anything interesting. Uh, but so hello, let's look at I think LDD uh, bin hello. So if you look at the hello binary here, it links to certain libraries here. Uh, well, mainly libc and the dynamic linker. Uh, let's actually look at a file. Yeah, I think that's that's um, that's good. So uh, in next, if you create a binary, it's gonna get a dynamic interpreter with a, a long store path. The hello binary will also depend on this as on this store path as a runtime dependency. We can look at it like this. We can do next door dash qr. Then we can see here it depends on this glibc path here. And so if you compare compare this to traditional uh, distros those will have a an interpreter here of something like lib uh, ld linux something like that and so in next this is kind of pure because right it it doesn't depend on some uh, what is this fhs path because it's it's a pure path that generally shouldn't change in the next door um so that's pure, but what about, uh, let's say, uh, let's pick a, a, a package that has a user level configuration. So like um, uh, Kitty maybe, let's say a terminal. So Kitty, when we run this, uh, or we can use it help. Uh, let's look at this for example. So. We have a config file we can provide to it. Um, Kitty.conf fits in, in this path. And so when we provide this path or this path, it's going to change <laughs> the result in some way. So let's do bin kitty and do like config and uh, provide something here like foo. Oh, uh, it started the terminal, yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it's a bit hard to explain, but what do you want to consider impurities here? Because for 
the same input, the same CLI command here, you might get different results, like depending on what is contained in this full, in this full file. And depending on what the user is, it's going to behave differently. Uh, also, depending on what your current machine is, depending on if the binary can run uh, a whole lot of things. Uh, at the same time, Nix does provide some levels of, of uh, assurances. So if you look at the kitty binary, uh, it's actually not a dynamic executable, uh, but like the, uh, the hello case. Hello. Uh, this at least links to the to some pure binaries. Um, yeah, so just kind of a, a mention here, uh, but let's go back to this here. So we have build result, and I just want to summarize the impurities here a bit. We have uh, libraries which can be impure or dynamic libraries linked to. Uh, we have just the user executing. Oh, screen share disappeared. We just have the user executing it and their home directory, uh, the machine, the binaries run on, uh, you, uh, a whole lot of these things. And some of these are covered by Nix. Uh, packages, or by next packages. Typically, if you have uh, an application that has like an extension architecture or plugins, aren't those, mm -hmm. they, they are typically, I guess, uh, some would say uh, problematic in, in uh, Nix or Nix OS list because you often need to configure them. Well, like, yeah, yeah that's, that's a good point. So like plugins as, uh, what is it, uh, as, uh, dynamic libraries loaded at runtime. Yeah, yes. So that's, oh yeah, um, good point. So deal. Deal open. Deal open, yes. Oh, and actually, yeah, that, that I kind of forgot one of the main impurities here, that is path. <laughs> um, so a lot of scripts, I think uh, a good one is uh, bash snippets yeah bash snippets i i packaged this packaged this some time ago and so i remember it but this if you just fetch it it will i mean let's look at the source here bash snippets.source let's go into the source here uh, we will have a lot of a lot of paths like this so it will install a whole bunch of scripts in the output and these scripts refer to like user bin env. They refer to like local tooling, uh, which is even generic here. Um, that's I think that's for testing. Yeah, it's 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 a bit more abstract abstracted now, which is nice. Uh, but so yeah, so whenever a user runs it, they might not even have these binaries available. And so what you want to do on the kind of next derivation level is to wrap these binaries with a path that contains all of the binaries that you depend on. Uh, this can be done with wrap program, which is an alias to make wrapper uh, file file. Uh, so make wrapper is one of the main utilities for that. I believe that should, uh, is it actually documented? Let's look at it. Next package is manual, make wrapper. It is, uh, to some degree at least. Uh, make wrapper here uh, can wrap a path, for example. It can also do that for other environment variables. Uh, so this kind of makes these binaries pure, purer in, in a way uh, to, to at least catch the purities that people expect when you run them. So that's like the dependencies and so on. Uh, if you want to do that for deal open, so let's actually look at deal open. Let's see if we can find a good example. Um, here, this looks good. So here we have a patch 
for a lib a crypt for a wraith. Not sure what that is, but we have a patch here that apparently replaces a this kind of thing, which apparently looks up some dynamic libraries at runtime and tries to deal open them. Yes, it tries to deal open them. And this gets replaced with this here in next, which uh, then the, uh, if you see this, this is a substitution for next, I believe the, if you look at the default here, substitute in place, that's a standard environment utility, which can replace these variables. And so this open SSL variable we saw earlier gets replaced with some next path, which is then pure. And so you can uh, patch the source to get rid of these purity impurities. You can wrap the binary to get rid of these impurities. An alternative here would have been to, uh, like after installing, you could have also used make wrapper. You could have done um, like out bin wraith and then prefix. So we saw path, path you'd prefix like this and then make bin path. Um, in this case, because it would be DL open, what you could do is use LD library path. Uh, LD library path is what DL open also looks at to load dynamic libraries. So you could prefix that and you can make a, I think make lib path. I think that exists, yeah. Or make library path. This way you could pass open SSL in here. Uh, there is a generally, it, it depends on what works here. If this works, LD library path is a bit weird. I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, if you can try to patch the source to get rid of these impurities, uh, yes. Uh, is it good practice to always use check? I saw, I see in a comment. Uh, check is very rarely needed if you generally you don't need it. Uh, no, but if you expect something to be rebuilt or you, you made some change and it didn't uh, get rebuilt, you might need to check. Uh, but then again, that kind of hints at an impurity. So we got a bit sidetracked here. So impurities, yes. Uh, so one last thing I want to point out here is that this is not guaranteed by Nix, but rather by Nix packages and uh, derivation builds on a best effort basis. So Nix does absolutely nothing to guarantee runtime purity. That's all done by Nix packages and having good builds. And so, and, and Nix also can't really do very much here. What happens at runtime, at, at runtime Nix is not involved anymore. You can copy binaries around have, however you want. And Nix won't prevent that. Uh, yeah, so important to keep in mind. And this is kind of, uh, it, it's kind of incremental, these levels of impurity where the Nix language level uh, Nix can fully control the derivation level. Nix can a little bit control without sacrificing performance. But then there's things like the time architecture and so on, which Nix doesn't control, but mostly don't matter. And then we have the third level, which uh, the runtime impurities. Nix can't control that, uh, but the Nix packages uh, maintainers try to do as good of a job here as possible. And this is a very important part of Nix. If we didn't have that, you, you wouldn't have a lot of the, the niceties of Nix. Um, yeah, so uh, we are about of, out of time, but are there any questions about this? All right, otherwise you can always ask a question in the Nix Hour repository. Uh, and yeah, then I hope that was useful. I got 
was a bit hard to talk about the last step here, but um, yeah, I hope it I hope it helped anyways. And then yeah, see you next week.